Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. So 2017 was just packed with really good smartphone choices to choose from. Basically every manufacturer out there delivered some really good stuff this year. And it was really hard to make videos on them because every time I would find a phone and make a video on it, a month later, some other company would come out with another phone that was just as good. It was really hard for me to just be like, hey, this one's good, that one's good. No, wait, that one's good. So these are the favorite ones. These are the ones that over the course of the year were like my top picks. Any phone that is in this pile was a phone that I just really enjoyed using and just kind of surprised me as to how good it was. So I'm just kind of gonna go through them and eventually I'll go down to my very favorite phone of 2017. So I'm gonna start off with the Note 8. This phone was, this thing launched at almost $1,000. And when I first learned about its price tag, it was super disappointing because it was so much more expensive than I felt like it should be. The S8 and the S8 Plus were really similar in experience, but this thing was just so much more than those two. Now it's down to like 750, 800 bucks, which is way more reasonable. It still isn't my favorite phone right now because if you buy it right now, if I bought this right now, I'd still be paying for things that I don't use and things that I don't particularly like. So like the pen, I would never use it. The telephoto lens on the back, it's just not stuff that I would ever use. And same with the software, I'm not a fan of the whole Samsung software. So solid phone, just not my favorite phone. Okay, moving along, we have the LG V30. And this is a phone that functionally, I enjoyed more than any of the Samsung phones. It's the same kind of idea, like thin bezeled, but just ergonomically, I love the way this phone feels and I love the use of its secondary lens. So this is a wide angle lens and I just much prefer this type of focal length. I just find it more useful for the type of photos that I take. But that being said, I still don't love the software. Now I actually ran mine with the Google launcher and I eventually tried the Nova launcher, but I could never make mine feel stock enough. It always just had this, kind of LG vibe to it. I mean, some people love that stuff, but it's just not my thing. So not my favorite phone of the year. Next up is the Razer phone. And this is a phone that really impressed me at launch. It had a lot of unique features that just really stood out. 120 hertz screen, really good speakers, probably the best speakers in the industry. But the price tag, $700, I mean, it's fair for what you're getting. It's not like super overpriced or anything, but I just felt like it wasn't a compelling enough purchase for me. A lot of the features in here were geared towards media consumption and gaming, which were cool, but it didn't have a headphone jack, which was just really backwards to me. Like on a device like this, where you constantly have this thing plugged up because you're just draining batteries really quickly, it would be nice to be able to have this thing able to be charged while having headphones connected to it, which was impossible. So yeah, good device, just not my favorite. I just think a lot of the headlining features are really, really nice and good for a lot of people, just not ideal for me. Okay, next up, let's go with the Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL. This is a phone that I really liked. And when this thing launched, so many people complained about the screen, but I never had any real issues with it. I mean, it's not as awesome as a Note 8 screen, but I was always happy with the screen. I never had burn in, didn't have really bad blue shift or anything, but the price tag was steep. $850 is a lot of money for a Pixel device. It does have the best camera in the Android game right now. I just, cameras aren't that important to me. They're important, it's just not the most important feature. I felt like I was paying for features that I didn't need, like the super smart assistant, the squeeze feature, like it's just stuff that's cool, but not stuff that I would use every day. So again, really good phone, not my favorite. Okay, next up, a central phone. This thing, man, I had huge hopes for this thing. I really like this phone. This thing, oh, this one's on. I thought I'd turn them all off. This phone launched at 700 bucks, which was stupidly overpriced. I felt like if this thing had launched at the $500 price point that it is now, this thing would have sold so well. And the other thing that hurt this thing a lot was the camera. When this thing launched, it had like a really mediocre camera. The hardware is okay, but I had an engineering sample and my camera was like better than the retail units. And it just took a long time for those engineering software bits to kind of trickle down to the retail units. Now the camera is actually not bad, but a lot of people don't really love this phone because of the original bad reviews. The one thing that kind of holds me back from this thing is the screen. It's not an OLED panel, so when you look at it and you look at other Android devices that do have an OLED panel, it just looks not as nice. The phone is still really solid. I love the ceramic back. I love that bezel-less design. It's just not my favorite phone of the year. Okay, last up before my favorite is the iPhone 10. Now this was by far the most exciting iPhone that I had seen launched in a long time. Before this one was probably like the iPhone 4. That one was pretty hype. This one, was the most hype since then. And I mean, I really like this phone, but the price tag, holy smokes, this thing, okay. This thing's price tag doesn't just affect the people that are gonna buy the iPhone 10. This thing's price tag is gonna affect the entire industry. Next year, because of this thing being a $1,000 phone, all the flagships are gonna be like, hey, Apple did a $1,000 phone, 
we can do a thousand dollar phone. So I wouldn't be surprised if like most of the flagships coming out next year are gonna be close to a thousand dollars. This thing just put a green light out there to make it cool and acceptable for a thousand dollar price tags on phones. And that kills me. The phone is great. It's just way, way, way too expensive. Okay, this leads me to my favorite, OnePlus 5T. Now, when the OnePlus 5 launched, I liked the phone, it was good. This thing is even better. It's a more premium looking phone than the original OnePlus 5, just because of the bigger screen. It's got thinner bezels, it just looks like an eight or $900 phone, but it costs 500 bucks. I love face unlock on this thing. I thought it would be gimmicky, but it's so fast and it's super reliable. It's obviously not as secure as the iPhone X's Face ID. That has just so much more tech involved with the Face ID process, but this is fast and it's super, super convenient. I love that. The other thing I love about it is dash charge. I know a lot of phones have the whole wireless charging thing now, even the iPhones this year, and wireless charging is cool, but dash charge for me is just so much more useful. See, I fall asleep often with Netflix running and I wake up in the morning with like five, 10% battery or sometimes dead, plug it in 30 minutes and it fills up. And that's the thing, the whole marketing thing that OnePlus says with like, you know, you get a full day of battery on a 30 minute charge, it's true. You plug it in literally from 0%, you're gonna hit like 60% in half an hour. It's awesome. And when I compare it to the other phones that I have here, it just charges so much faster. The camera is pretty good. It's obviously not gonna outshoot the Pixel 2 XL or the Note 8 or the iPhone 10, but for $500, I'm really happy with this camera. For low light scenes, this camera is noticeably better than the original OnePlus 5. Like this shot here where there's some really bright lights that pop out in the dark, it's just so much cleaner on the 5T compared to the 5. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between them. But photos in general just look good on this phone. Obviously not the best, but honestly for $500, I'm super happy with it. Now, I consider this to be the phone that I would recommend to just basically anyone. If I had to blindly choose a phone for people that I didn't know, like my relatives or something like that, I would get this phone for them because it's just, there's so much about this phone that I love. Things like the headphone jack, like so many people want that thing. And last year, a lot of companies were like, hey, we're keeping the, we're keeping the headphone jack, look how cool we are. And this year they drop it and they don't even mention it. They're keeping it. I wouldn't be surprised if the ones next year have it as well. It's just. They recognize the value of this thing. They recognize how many people want this thing. And I love that about this company. Okay, this is my favorite phone of 2017. Now, if you're wondering why these phones are red, especially because I don't like the color red, these are all skinned by Dbrand. I got skins from them. The reason why I did it was because I wanted the thumbnail to look like a heart, like the whole like 808 and Heartbreak album from Kanye. It's like a really cool thing. I don't know if it worked though. If you guys thought it looked like a heart, let me know. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.